On this video, we're exploring the history behind Wizard Video and their journey into the video game world. They would release two very controversial horror games for the time, but would it help them or lead to their demise? Let's find out on the story of Wizard Video Games. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up to date on my latest videos. Let's get started. <laughs> Wizard Video was a film distribution company started by Charles Band, who was known in the industry for his B-movies in the horror comedy genre, such as the 1985 movie Reanimator. They were best known for their VHS releases of I Spit on Your Grave, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Zombie 2. They would also be well known for the artwork on their big box VHS tapes, the label itself, Wizard Video, would become so popular they started reissuing titles under the old Wizard Video banner. As Wizard Video was gaining steam, they decided to catch a ride on the popularity of the Atari 2600 and create their own company called Wizard Video Games. The company would go on to create two horror movie based video games. The first game to release was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in March 1983. It was based on the 1974 American slasher film by Toby Hooper. Upon its release, the movie was banned in several countries and a number of theaters would stop showing it in response to complaints about the film's violence. It was also well known for being falsely marketed as a true story. And I can tell you from my experience, it was scary as hell as a 10 year old. The game was designed and programmed by VSS, a software development company started by Ed Salvo, who previously worked as the director of development at Games by Apollo, and was well known for the Atari 2600 game Skeet Shoot. In the game, the player controls Leatherface and must kill trespassers while avoiding obstacles. Each trespasser that is killed is worth 1,000 points. At every 5,000 points, additional fuel is given to the player for the chainsaw. The player loses a life when the chainsaw runs out of gasoline, and losing all the gas means game over. Even though it had very simplistic gameplay, it caused quite a controversy. Since it was one of the first horror-themed video games, it was judged very harshly by consumers and retailers who saw the gameplay as too violent. The game would see very poor sales due to being banned in many stores or hidden behind the counter out of view from the consumer. The second game to release was Halloween in October 1983. It was based on the 1978 American slasher film directed and scored by John Carpenter. Halloween has gone on to become a widely influential film within the horror genre and is largely responsible for popularization of slasher films in the 80s. In the game, the player controls the babysitter and must try and rescue as many children as possible, all while being chased by the villain Michael Myers. Also, when Michael appears on the screen, the infamous Halloween theme music plays in the background. Interestingly enough, the game contains way more blood than the film. When the babysitter is killed, her head is replaced by pulsating blood while she runs around frantically. The player can advance the levels by rescuing five children or stabbing Michael twice. Just like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, the game was very controversial and banned by many retail stores that refused to carry it. The stores that did carry it often kept it behind the counter on a request only basis. In 1983, the video game industry would experience a major crash due in part to market saturation and dwindling game quality such as the E.T. video game released a year earlier. Due to this, the sales of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween video games were very poor. This would lead to Wizard Video Game taking a massive hit and drive them to bankruptcy. While liquidating their merchandise, some copies of Halloween games were shipped and sold with the name Halloween handwritten in orange on a white sticker. 
In 1985, British developer Palace Software began development on another Halloween game unrelated to the Wizard video games version. The rights to the movie were obtained and Steve Brown was assigned to the project. However, Brown was unable to develop a solid concept for the game and instead designed a game based on Halloween themes such as witches and pumpkins. However, Stuart Hunt from the magazine Retro Gamer attributed the switch in design to Mary Whitehouse's campaign against violent horror films in the 80s. Mary Whitehouse was an English social activist who founded the National Viewers and Listeners Association. She would use this association to criticize the BBC for its excessive use of bad language and portrayals of sex and violence in its programs. We may never know for sure what the reason for the switch was, but it was a good thing because the change did not hinder the quality at all. And when Cauldron released in 1985, it was met with very positive reviews and led to a sequel in 1986. To date, there has never been another Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Halloween video game. But the original games are very rare and have become very collectible to retro video game enthusiasts. That's the story of Wizard Video Games and their two very controversial horror video games. Have you played either of these games? And if so, what's your thoughts? I think it's safe to say that people were overreacting quite a bit to the violence. It's also very surprising to me that these two movies have never received another video game based on them. I think if you were to take the design of the game Alien Isolation released in 2014 and mix it with the Halloween movie, it would make for a fantastic video game. Comment below what your ideas would be for a new video game based on either of these two movies. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up to date on my latest videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Rod here with Zavivi Entertainment. Before I get out of here, make sure to check out Digital Break for some awesome content creators. Digital Break is a one hour block on local TV that premiered in April. They are taking talented YouTube creators and airing their content on local TV. So make sure to follow and like their Facebook page. Thanks everyone, I'm out.